Hello and welcome to lesson 39 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at using something called the second derivative to decide whether a stationary point is a maximum or minimum. Okay, so we're going to be using the knowledge we gained in lesson 38, finding stationary points, and then we're going to develop a little bit further and ha have a process of deciding whether it's a maximum or a minimum. So before we look at that worked example, I'm going to be talking about what the second derivative is and why it's important. Okay, so on this function here, we have a curve where the gradient is changing throughout. Okay, so throughout this curve, we have some parts where the, the gradient's very steep positive, some parts where it's um, negative, some parts where the gradient's zero. Okay, and those are the stationary points. Okay, throughout though, the curve has a changing gradient. Okay, so if we look at two sections of the graph, I'm going to label those two sections A and B. Okay, and let's look at what, what the gradient of the graph is doing in those two sections. Okay, those two sections are different for a very specific reason. If we look at how the gradient is changing throughout A and how the gradient is changing throughout B, we will notice something different about those two parts of the graph. Okay, so in part A, we have a start, okay, so the furthest left point, so at the start of part A, well, it'll continue beyond, but it starts with a point here where the gradient is very positive. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a pretty steep positive gradient at that point. And as we progress through A, okay, so when we get to this point here, it's, it's still very, you know, pretty positive, but not as steep positive as it was before. So it's getting less positive. As we get to this point, the, the gradient's still positive, but it's rather shallow positive. And as we go towards the maximum point, okay, the gradient is now zero. And then as we go beyond the, the maximum point, the gradient is now negative. Very shallow negative, but neg negative nonetheless. And as we move to this point here at the end of section A, it's getting more negative. Okay. So throughout section A, we've gone from very steep positive to negative. So we have the gradient throughout A has been decreasing. Okay, so the gradient of the curve in section A is decreasing. Now we look at section B. It goes from a pretty negative gradient and then very shallow negative and then to zero and then to shallow positive gradient and then to a more positive gradient and then to a very positive gradient. Okay, as we go through B, the gradient is clearly increasing. It goes from negative through to positive and throughout the gradient is increasing. Okay, so throughout A, the curve is bending down and the gradient is decreasing throughout. Throughout B, the curve is bending up and the gradient is increasing throughout that. Okay, which leads us to the following thing. So let's talk about the rate at which the gradient is changing in each, each of these sections. In section A, the rate of change of the gradient is negative. Okay, because as you can see, the change in the gradient goes from positive all the way through zero and then down to negative gradient. So the rate at which the gradient is changing is negative. Okay, it is decreasing throughout. The statement rate of change, to find the rate at which something is changing, we differentiate to do this, okay? The process of calculus is about finding, the process of differentiation, which is part of calculus, is about finding the rate at which something is changing. We're talking here though about the rate of change of the gradient, not the rate of change of y, but the rate of change of the gradient. The gradient itself is the rate of change of y. So we have already differentiated to find the gradient. So really what we have to say here is that the second derivative 
A derivative is what you get when you differentiate something. So the first derivative is the gradient. So if we differentiate a curve, y equals f of x, we get the gradient function, which is called the first derivative. If we differentiate again, we get the, the rate at which the gradient is changing, which is what we're talking about here, which is called the second derivative. And the second derivative, the notation for the second derivative is d squared y by dx squared. The notation for the first derivative, the gradient is dy by dx. OK, the reason behind d squared y by dx squared, why it's weird, why the squared is in different places, is something you can look up, you can, you can explore. I'm not going to explain it to you now, but you can look it up, you can explore, you can ask your maths teacher. OK, you can comment in the notes below. OK, if you'd like me to comment back, I'll, I'll say whether you're right or not. So d squared y by dx squared is the notation for the second derivative. So in section A, we know that that is negative. So that is less than zero. Throughout A, if a, if a curve is bending down, the second derivative will be negative. Now let's look at section B. In section B, the rate of change of the gradient is positive because it is constantly increasing gradient throughout section B. It is bending up. It is going from negative through zero to positive gradients. So the rate at which the gradient is changing is positive. So the second derivative in section B is greater than zero. Okay, which leads us to knowing that if I have a curve that's bending down, that's where I'm gonna have a maximum point. If I've got a curve that's bending up, that's where I will have a minimum point. So the second derivative can tell us whether I have a maximum or minimum because it'll tell me whether the curve is bending down around that point or it's bending up around that point. OK, so this is what we now know. If on the curve of y equals f of x, the gradient is zero. So we have a stationary point. And the second derivative is less than zero, then we have so if it's less than zero, we, it, the curve is bending down. So it's like this. Then we have a maximum point. And if the second derivative is positive, that means the curve is bending up. The gradients are increasing throughout. That means we have a minimum point. So in the exam, we are often asked to use the second derivative to explain or to classify what kind of stationary point you have. And we're going to show that process now. We All we need to know is whether the second derivative is negative or positive, and that will decide whether we have a maximum or a minimum point. So let's show that in process. OK, here's the example we want to do. In the last lesson, we actually did this example, but we didn't we didn't uh, do it in order to classify the points. We did it in order to sketch the curve. We found the stationary points. So I will quickly show you how to find the stationary points, but then we're going to focus on classifying them. So find the stationary points on the curve y equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 4, and then classify them using the second derivative. So first, I'm just going to find the stationary points to remind you of that process from last lesson. First, you differentiate dy by dx is equal to 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. And the 4 disappears, well, it differentiates to 0. Now, to find a stationary point, that is when the second, when the first derivative, when the gradient 6x squared minus 6x minus 12 is equal to 0. That's where the stationary points are, when the gradient is 0. So we solve that. In order to solve that, I divide by everything by six, it's the same solution as x squared minus x minus two is zero. That can be factorized into x plus one, x minus two equals zero. So therefore x is either minus one or x is two. And when x is minus one, y is 11. When x is two, y is minus 16. So we've got the coordinates, 
for our stationary points, which are minus 111 and 2 minus 16. OK, now for a simple question like this, where we've got a cubic and we know it's a positive cubic, we will know that the leftmost point will be the maximum point and the right point will be the minimum point because it'll have this this shape. So we'll go maximum, then minimum. But there will be questions where you have more complex um, functions, which you won't, won't know the shape of. And we're going to show the process using this so that you can see that, yes, I was right. The first one was a max, the second was a min. Um, and then we'll decide whether that makes sense. So we've got the stationary points, minus 111 and 2 minus 16. The next thing we need to do at this point in order to classify them is find the second derivative. So the second derivative is what you get when you take the first derivative and you differentiate again. So d squared y by dx squared, remember that's the notation for the second derivative. That is the rate of change of the rate of change of y, the rate of change of the gradient. If we differentiate 6x squared, we get 12x. If we differentiate minus 6x, we get minus 6. If we differentiate minus 12, we get 0. So the second derivative is 12x minus 6. At this point, we simply need to know what the second derivative is worth at the two coordinates we have, at the stationary points. So we're going to now substitute the correct x value into the second derivative to decide the value of the second derivative for each of those points. So we're going to do the leftmost point, the minus 111 point. So minus 111. So at that point, x is minus 1. So when x is minus 1, the second derivative is 12 times minus 1, take away 6. And that's negative 18. Now, since it's negative 18, that means the second derivative is negative. As we know, a negative value for the second derivative means we have a maximum point. So the second derivative is negative, so it's bending down. So minus 1, 11 is a maximum point okay so that is classified we have now classified minus 111 as a maximum point because the second derivative is negative for that point our next point 2 minus 16 so 2 minus 16 when x is 2 the second derivative is equal to 12 twos minus six. And that's equal to 18. 18 is a positive value. So the second derivative at this point is greater than zero. And as it's greater than zero, that means the curve is bending up. So the point two minus 16 is a minimum point, okay, because a bending up curve, you'll have a minimum point. Bending down, you'll have a maximum point. Okay, so that is that point classified. We've classified it as a minimum point. And that's what you need to do. You first find the stationary points. After you've found the coordinates of the stationary points, you then differentiate again to find the second derivative. And then you find the value of that second derivative for each of the coordinates by substituting the values of x. If they are negative, if that second derivative is negative, you've got a maximum. If the second derivative is positive, you've got a minimum. So have a go at this one. If you did the last lesson, you would have done the workings for this to find the, the stationary points. All you need then would be to find, to classify them using the second derivative. If you haven't done the work to find the stationary points, do it again, and it will help you to practice that again, even if you have done it before. So pause. 
and find the stationary points on the curve y equals x cubed minus 12x plus 3 and then classify them using the second derivative and then I will go through the answer. So the answer. First thing, differentiate dy by dx is equal to 3x squared minus 12. Set that equal to 0 to find the stationary points. Solve it. When you solve it, you get x squared equals 4. So x is minus 2 or 2. And when x is minus 2, y is 19. When x is 2, y is minus 13. So you've got the following two coordinates. Minus 2, 19 and 2, minus 13. Those are the stationary points. So we found them. Now we need to classify them. To classify them, find the second derivative. So d squared y by dx squared is simply differentiate dy by dx again. 3x squared differentiates to 6x. Minus 12 differentiates to 0. So the second derivative is just 6x. Then for each of the coordinates, use that second derivative to help you classify them. So let's do minus 2, 19 first. For minus 2, 19, x is minus 2. And the second derivative for x is minus 2 is equal to 6 minus 2s, which is minus 12. That is negative. And therefore, there is a maximum point. Since the curve is bending down, it's a maximum point at minus 219. Okay, so that's the first one classified. For the second one, the 2 minus 13, you substitute this time x is 2 in into the second derivative. And you get 6 lots of 2, which is 12, and that is positive. And if it's positive, it's bending up, and therefore, there is a minimum point at the point 2 minus 13. So that is that one classified. Okay, so if you got those right, brilliant. Okay, you now need to just practice that with different types of functions. Okay, so until you feel fluent and using the second derivative to classify. Now, you might when you get a bit more, a bit more difficult questions, you might find questions where the second derivative is zero. And then you might think, what do I do at this point? That is an interesting question to get. And I want you to try and research what you should do at that point. Okay, because this method sometimes, very few, but sometimes falls down. And that's when the second derivative is zero. Okay, but look that up or talk to your math teacher about that. Okay, what you should do now is practice questions from exercise 14.4 from the textbook until you feel fluent in classifying stationary points. Okay, so go away and enjoy, and I will see you in the next lesson where we will begin the process of integration, which is the opposite, the reverse process of differentiation. Okay, so off you go and enjoy.